Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We appreciate you. Many of you have seen the premiere of the new Tesla bot. Here we see it without its outer covering, walking shakily out on stage, and doing a few basic movements. None of this is very impressive. In fact, the Atlas robot by Boston Dynamics is much more fluid in its movements and could do amazing feats of acrobatics at a level already superior to most humans, though not yet exceeding the most gifted of us. But the development of this robotic system is in fact a groundbreaking achievement, not for the robot's physical skills, but for the way it perceives the world and learns. The breakthrough is not at all about robotics. It's about artificial intelligence. The true breakthrough in this robot is here. This is the computer that controls a Tesla automobile. A Tesla car is not, I would argue, really a car. It is a robot that has wheels and transports people. This robot was designed to be smart enough to drive itself. I have owned and driven a Tesla Model 3 and a Model X, and there is nothing else in the world like them. Everyone is crying for full self-driving. This will be useful, but it is much less important than what's already available in every Tesla. Get onto the freeway and double pull the cruise control lever, and it drives itself down the road. So far its safety record while driving is about seven times safer than a human being. That's because we get tired, bored, and distracted. The Tesla computer does not. The computer also learns from experience, something many humans have yet to master. And these machines have a type of hive mind, where lessons learned from all the cars around the world are shared in a central computer, a supercomputer of astounding computational power that then clarifies and collates these lessons and uploads them to all the other cars when they are charging. This allows every car to learn exponentially. It stands to reason that these robotic systems will do the same. And then there is Dojo. Let's review this amazing system. Tesla showed us their current computer system, featuring these dual Tesla design chips. For any space or car company to design their own chips is an astonishing undertaking. Chips are complicated. Here are the capabilities of this chip. We used to report capabilities of a chip by clock speed and how many megahertz or gigahertz. This number told you how fast the CPU was cycling data. But this doesn't really tell you how fast the chip solves problems. A teraflop is a direct measure of a computer's processing ability. Specifically, its ability to calculate one trillion floating point operations per second. That means this chip can process 362 trillion floating point operations per second. Desktop PC chips can be a slow dual core at about two teraflops to a more powerful NVIDIA RTX GPU at 50 teraflops. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. These are the chips that crunch the numbers to allow high-resolution game graphics. These are amazing chips, but the new Tesla chips have 6 billion transistors and are 21 times more powerful than the NVIDIA chips used previously. How are they able to do this? Let's look inside a Tesla system. Here we see a neural network processor. This mimics a living brain. A brain neuron makes thousands of connections with other neurons. Over time, these connections become stronger or weaker depending on the success or failure of the animal. If an animal is thirsty and heads toward an open field and finds no water, then turns back toward the trees and finds a stream, no one has to tell it to look near the trees next time. The memory of the trees will be associated with the need for water. The next time the animal needs water, it will look for trees first. This is called neural net learning, and chips with this capability can learn from experience. This is how Tesla cars improve their driving skills. Next we see the GPU or graphics processing unit. This crunches the numbers to take the visual input from the cameras and break it down into a virtual world of edges, objects, and distance. This is almost exactly the way human vision works. Here is the main processor. It follows instructions like any good computer, while the GPU processes vision and the neural net learns by experience. There are safety features to prevent accidents and react to known threats like a battery fire, and also security systems to prevent hacking. Only Tesla code can run on a Tesla chip. 
The main difference between the Tesla car brain and a living brain is that every night your Tesla can download its neural net settings to a main computer, a type of hive mind. This hive mind will exist in an amazing new supercomputer called Dojo. Dojo is based on what are called neural processing units, and you can see one expanded here. Tesla automobiles have a self-driving function. Once you are on the freeway, you can double pull the cruise control lever and your car will stay in its lane at the speed you set. It will slow down if the car in front of you slows and dodge most road hazards. But you must stay vigilant. Tesla autopilot mode, and understand I think it should have been called co-pilot, since the human should always be ready to take over, will release control to you if you have to take over during an emergency. When you take over driving, a report is prepared and sent to the hive mind. The hive mind will then see what went wrong and try to make a plan to deal with similar situations in the future. It does this by using neural net processing units to create an artificial cortex to self-learn lessons from what the human driver does in that situation. This is the beginning of true artificial intelligence. The hive mind can then compare what all the cars have reported and send out updates to every one of them so they all learn from each other's experiences. We are just scratching the edge of this technology. But just as Tesla has made a type of artificial cortex for vision, it can make the same for other functions, eventually even executive functions. The AI will be able to set goals, plan, adapt, and overcome obstacles, learn new things and change its mind. These are all the result of neural net changes in a cortex, whether organic or synthetic. These functions will eventually be added to the onboard Starship computers. Human beings won't fly Starships by throwing levers and pushing buttons. They'll give the Starship orders and it will carry them out. Humanoid robots will have similar systems to explore unknown areas, perhaps deep in the lava tubes of the Moon or Mars, reporting back with perfect clarity what they find. These systems will automatically investigate unusual features and protect themselves from injury. What are the limits of this technology? How smart would you get if you could keep adding cortex? How much would you learn if you had a thousand years of experience? But that's not all. Every new AI will be born, knowing all the lessons of the AIs that came before. Where will this leave humans? Eventually, we will have artificial organs that last far longer than the ones we were born with. Over time, as our organic body fails, it will be replaced with a synthetic one. Then microscopic robots called nanobots will travel through our synthetic bloodstreams to our brains, inserting themselves into neurons and taking over its function when the neuron dies. Over time, every neuron in the brain will be replaced with a synthetic one that can last essentially forever. You will not notice the change since they will perfectly mimic your native neurons. But these synthetic ones will be able to download their settings to your computer system. A continuous digital backup, if you will. And should, after thousands of years of life, some accident destroy you, a new synthetic body and brain could be loaded with your mind. And a version of you would go on, learning and experiencing more of the universe. This is the future of humanity, if we can just last long enough to see it. This is why when I watch the introduction of a Tesla bot, I am not that concerned about its physical abilities. Have you ever heard anyone remark about how much weight Einstein could bench press? It may look like a two-year-old taking its first steps today, but just like every one of these athletes did, it will learn and improve. And I predict that this time next year, the Tesla bot will be able to perform feats that no other robotic system will match. Not because of its body, but because of its mind. The future can be very bright for all of us if we can just see past today to what will be possible tomorrow. Something to think about. Thanks for watching and stay safe at Astro Proterra.